One month has passed, and today we are refreshing our marketing mix model with the new data. So we had 28 new days inside of our data set, and we want to refresh the model to check the performances of the last month, see how the ROIs change in the past month, and actually check whether the budget allocator got the prediction correct or not, and see actually if I follow the suggestions or not. So it's really easy. Let's click on refresh model. Keep in mind, with the refresh model, what we try to say to the model is here we have a new set of data and the model is going to optimize these other parameters and coefficients to find the best fit for this model. So let's click it here and click the data. As you can see, it auto selected the last data point, the, the, the new data points here. I need to just call it refresh YouTube. And then I need to select the budget allocator because I want to automatically compare the results where to use test for. And then I'm going to click refresh model. Everything looks correct. It's going to start the refresh. All right, Cassandra is ready for the refresh. Let's click, yes, refresh my model. Click the refresh started. I can close this and I can see here, refresh YouTube started, I click check status and the trial one is started. So we have 1% completed. It's going to generate four trials and iterate um, on it for five times. It's going to require less trials and iterations compared to the first training because it's starting for a, from a really good point with other parameters and coefficient. Keep in mind, this refresh works in this way. We give some var variance and constraints around each other parameter and each coefficient. So the machine learning algorithm can adapt around the new, new constraints that we gave him and find the new optimal value starting from the initial values that we gave him for the first uh, train model. So starting from the first train model lever parameter set coefficients, it can vary a little. It doesn't vary much, but can vary a little to adjust for the new per performances that it sees. What happens is in every iteration, it becomes more precise in terms of uh, ability of predicting accurate incremental sales, not talking about accuracy by itself. But all right, so uh, let's click OK. I want I actually already did a refresh, so we can just check to it. Click view model. Here we have the original train modeled. Here we have the refresh. Let's click on it. All right. Here we have the refreshed model. The overall accuracy, the R square, was a little less than the previous period, but it's fine. We don't care a lot about accuracy itself. It's important to have a higher than 70% for daily data set and higher than 80% with the weekly data set. But overall, it's not a necessary, super important metric. It just describes how much the, the input variables describe the output variable, which it can even be, these sales can even be uh, dependent about temperature or people leaving and not going um, going to work, etc. There, there are millions of reasons why there are variations in sales. So, and we cannot insert every variable and every factor inside our marketing mix. Keep in mind, the benchmarks that are really fine are 70% for daily data set and 80% for weekly data sets. Now, here's what happens. This is the lift measured by Cassandra. We did not follow Cassandra's budget allocation, but we still saw a positive lift of 38%, which is crazy. So let's see what happened. So we, if you click this button, we're going to um, compare our spend with the suggested spend of the budget allocator. And we spend more money into display, a little less money into Facebook conversions than uh, what is suggested, more money into Facebook product catalog sales, more money into Google Performance Max, more money to Google search brand, a lot more money to Google search no brand. Google search no brand did not have any or a lot of impact. It had some impact, but didn't have a lot. So this allocation was wrong. I don't know who did it. I'm not going to blame anyone, but we're just analyzing the results after 28 days. Um, we spent less in influencer, which is fine, than the suggested volume. Magazine ads, we spent less in the suggested volume, which is fine. And we spend more in radio ads, which is good because we saw that it had a really big impact. And on TV, we spent way less, which is good. Let's click OK. Now, what I want to do, I want to compare the ROIs and how they changed uh, now in this month compared to the previous period. So the only thing that reduced um, has seen a decrease in ROI is Facebook product catalog sales because we spent too much more money in that channel. And we saw a little decrease in the Google search no brand because we exaggerated with the volume of investments here. But the rest, like radio, it increased the ROIs. It increased the ROI in Google search brand and uh, 
it increased the ROI into display ads. And TV ads stayed practically the same. Now, here we have other suggestions, and another suggestion is to increase the daily budget of Performance Max up to 1,574 euros, while magazine ads, we should still decrease it. Let's continue here. Uh, in this month, still radio ads was the bigger contri biggest contributor to our sales. It was not uh, Facebook product catalog sales, which is interesting. Probably what happened was the model realized that we were overspending on Facebook product catalog sales. We will check the graph and see whether we were overspending. Second in line, we have Google search brand that is a big contributor and Google Performance Max. So what happened was that Facebook product catalog sales moved from the first position to the fourth position, which is interesting. And this explains the difference in the ROI. So before we had a three and now we have a one. Interesting. Now here, what we are seeing now is the next period is going to have a little decrease in demand. So probably what happens is we did not follow the suggestion. We got a positive lift. We missed mistakenly allocated more budget into Google search on our brand. The model recalibrated Facebook product catalog sales. And the reason why one of the variables that influenced the positive lift is probably because we, here in this period, we got an increase in demand. Now in the next period, probably we need to invest way more, way less money into advertising because the demand is decreasing. Now, this is really important. We need to actually take to account the volume of investments based on how much demand we have in a certain period of time for our brand. Let's see the channel discovery. I want to actually see Facebook product cutout sales, which is, as we can see, we're investing in a really um, delicate piece. Let's click on Facebook product cutout sales here too. We don't have a lot of data points here. And it looks like it's saturating. So we should spend around 700 a way better um, to have a way better efficiency here. And um, yes, so that's perfect. So let's see Google search brand instead. Google search brand has better revenue response than Facebook product catalog sales. It has instant impact. Look at this. Awesome. And let's see radio ads, which is the most contributor, the biggest contributor. As you can see, it has a linear correlation. Let's see here. Radio ads. Yes, it's perfect. 89% correlation, which is crazy. Awesome. So I want to actually detect and see how we distributed our budget over time. Here, we can see how we actually distribute our budget over time. And we, I want to is isolate Google search for our brand because in there, we mistakenly allocated more money. As you can see here, we, yeah, we invested too much money into no brand as compared to Google search brand. Though. So I don't know what happened in my organization, my marketing team, but it happened that they allocated way more money to Google search on our brand than Google search brand that according to the model was the best performer. So here someone is going to get uh, a warning in my organization. Said that, uh, so we mistakenly allocated more money into Google search on our brand. And let's see Facebook product catalog sales. Facebook product catalog sales follow the suggestion. And let's see here, I want to isolate it and see what happened with Facebook product catalog sales because the efficiency of this allocation changed a lot. Here it is. So we, in this month, we in this week, 16th of January, we invested 4,753 and we generated 9,663 euros. While in here, we invested 1,500 and we generated 2,190. So with low volume of investments, we have a lower ROI compared to here which we have a two or something. 4,700, yes, it's closer to two than the, the ROIs that it's uh, this volume of investments. But if we exaggerate in investing, like in this case, in which we invest 5K, oh, right, it's a 1.8, 1.8 ROI, which is interesting. Right, we want to do this stuff and these analysis on all the variables that we have in our marketing mix. So we selected radio, we deselect Facebook, right? So let's select radio again. Uh, let's deselect Google search brand. And as we can see here, we're investing 2K in here in the 23rd of January, and we are generating 24,000. So it's an ROI of close to 10, 9 point something, which is amazing. Um, and here we have the seasonality and the holidays impact, obviously, and the day of the week. This is something that we did not see in the previous model. But what we want to do is... An we want to analyze the daily and the weekly impact because it allows us to arbitrage on the volume of investment that you 
we can actually modify during the week. So if we know that every Saturday we have a decrease in demand of 5% for our brand, we reduce our marketing budget by 5% during, during Saturdays. And this allows us to improve the overall ROI of our marketing mix, the ROI of marketing mix. Let's try to create a budget allocator. So in the next 28 days, we should spend less than 222,000 because the demand is changing, you remember? So what we want to do is we want to put 150K as a marketing budget. Let's call it a refresh test, refresh 150K. And let's click optimize budget. Oh, well, this is interesting. So we're going to decrease our marketing investments by 32% according to this budget allocator, but we're going to generate 20% more sales, more revenue. Uh, this is interesting. If we stop completely investing in Facebook conversion, stop investing into TV ads, increase radio ads, decrease Google search our brand finally by a lot, decrease a little display, decrease influencers, but we should keep investing a little more on product, Facebook product catalog sales and a little more in, into Performance Max. This is crazy, but it can be true. If we do that, if we stop investing in these two channels, we can increase our marketing ROI by 78%. So this is rare, but we've seen it. Sometimes there are channels that do not generate any incremental sales. And if we just stop spending and investing in those channels, there is a huge lift in the ROI that you can see right away. Because uh, the low hanging fruit for market mix modeling is to shut down the channels that are wasting your budget because they do not generate incremental sales. And if Cassandra can guide you through that decision and find out exactly what channel are, like in this case, which is Facebook conversion, TV, and next trial probably is going to suggest magazine ads to shut down, we can improve our ROI by a lot. This predicted outcome is a 78% increase. Um, so this is really, really interesting. And um, let's implement this. Let's implement this. We're um, really, really excited to see what would happen if we implement this strategy. And this time we need to follow the suggestion though. I'm going to push my marketing team to actually implement exactly these volume of investments in each channel. Hopefully this has been useful and there are going to be some other bonus chapter and um, new episodes in this masterclass. I don't know yet the name. So we'll see in the next episode. Have a great day.